Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at NECA's 40th anniversary alien figures, Lambert, Kane, and Ripley. Now, I'm doing these guys all together because they are mostly the same figure, other than accessories and paint, and obviously a few small details here and there, but they're mostly the same, so I figure we can get them all done at one, not waste a bunch of your time. You're going to get everything you need to know about each figure all in one video. Hopefully it doesn't run too long, but there is some stuff to talk about, though, so I said though twice. Let's go ahead and get them off the stand so we can take a closer look. All three of these figures are the same size, give or take, so we're just gonna do one, and that is gonna be about 18 centimeters to the top of the head, which makes them roughly seven and an eighth inches. Again, give or take, you lean the head a little bit and it's gonna change, but we're gonna do a quick overall look at the aesthetics. You can see the details of each one. As you can tell, they do have basically the exact same bodies. A uh, little bit of a difference for Ripley. She has the strap in the middle there the other two don't have that and she does not have this crotch mechanism whatever that is but largely they are still all the same figure just with different paint so i figure we might as well just knock it all at once so let's go ahead and look at ripley real quick first just for the unique details the head sculpt i think is really good and the paint is definitely good enough like yes maybe uh somebody who's going to spend a lot of time on a paint job is going to make it look more accurate to the actress but for the price point you know you're not going to get much better than that i think that is good that's fine and the figure is very well executed. All the detail work is good. No problems there, so that's fine. And then moving on to Kane. Again, lots of detail work, not solid white, so it has a lot more going on, a lot more paint. Very well executed. The metal is awesome looking. The copper with that greenish oxidation, that looks really good. I think the face sculpt is also really good. Same for the paint. Very, very pleased with that. Again, all the detail work throughout the figure is phenomenal, as is expected for this line from NECA. Excellent work. Again, I think it's a really good head sculpt, good paint. Is it perfect? No, you're not gonna get perfect, but these are damn good for the price. And look at that paint. There's more paint on one of these figures than like two waves of Marvel Legends. It's just nuts. So that's, it's they're really good looking. It's impressive. All the detail work, very, very nicely done. So from an aesthetic perspective, these guys are phenomenal. They're gonna get a 10 out of 10 for the aesthetic. I really don't think you can expect more than that at the price point. That is that is really good. Now, for the accessories, we're gonna run through all three of them. For Lambert, well, for all of them, but I'll do them each individually still. For Lambert, we have the helmet, which does come apart and you can get it on the figure. Very nicely detailed, nice clear dome, that's good. We do have the alternate head with the um, shower cap on, so that's good. Another good sculpt and paint job. We get the uh, boom box and then we get the blaster. And then for Kane, we have basically the same helmet with different paint on it, which is still really good. We get the helmet with the broken dome, which looks fantastic. Then we get the alternate head where he's playing with his pet. And then we get his boom box and his blaster. And then for Ripley, we have another helmet, slightly different helmet, but still mostly the same. And it looks really good and that's nice. Then we get her different blaster and some things that I have no idea what they are. I don't remember what those are but they are included. So that's a nice spread of accessories. I think that's pretty good. A couple alternate heads. 9.5, fine, you convinced me. 9.5 out of 10 for the accessories. Okay, they're all gonna share the same articulation uh, for the most part. I'll check Ripley to make sure there's nothing different, but let's go ahead and talk about the articulation. We have ball pegs on the neck, so it's a little bit more limited, but it should get the job done. I mean, none of these guys, especially in these suits, are gonna be running around doing martial arts, so I think that's fine. Shouldn't have a problem there. Shoulder pads are on the body, so the arms should raise. Yep, no problem at all. You do get your full rotation, but again, these are gonna flex. So just take that into account when you're posing. And obviously you can't go all the way up without it looking weird, but you can do it. So technically the articulation's there and functional. Bicep swivel is down here. It's the regular like old school cut joint, and that's fine. I mean, that's what you would expect on a, on a figure like this with straps everywhere. You do get the elbow joint, which can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to pose. There we go, we'll do it on this side. You get less than 90 degrees. There's technically rotation in there. Not technically, there is. So if you want the pad to be on the outside, you can do that. I would put the pad on the outside. I don't know if that's, it's probably supposed to be down, isn't it? Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, it's not a forearm pad, it's more of an elbow pad. I'm guessing, either way, you can rotate that to however you like it, so that's up to you. And then for the wrists, just a ball peg. Standard ball peg, so relatively limited range, but you know, you're gonna be able to move them around pretty well, so that's fine. Nothing nothing special, nothing to write home about, but definitely good enough range, and the way it's done is well executed. For the torso, we get a ball joint, a ball peg at the top. It moves around pretty well, considering they're pretty bulky. You're gonna get pretty good range, and it, it's there's nothing stuck. 
Good range, it's nice. It feels like there's actually another ball peg down in there too. I wouldn't be surprised if there is another ball peg in there that... Ah, there is. You can't tell. I couldn't even tell that that was a separate piece. And I'm a professional. <laughs> there's, a sep this, there's a cut here. It's a separate piece. This is soft. There's a joint in there. So there is another ball peg for the lower torso. So you get plenty of good range. If things, don't aren't, if things aren't bumping into each other, if they don't get in the way, you'll be able to pose these figures relatively well given their cumbersome nature. So that's good. Like I'm, I didn't expect much more from that and that's fine. I didn't expect that extra piece in there at all. So that's good. I didn't even notice it, which speaks to the quality of the sculpt. So I like that. It's a little bit more noticeable now that I know it's there and I'm not a doofus anymore. Okay, let's talk about the hips. The hips go out to the side there, the old school hips, because we've seen these bodies before and they were used before the ball pegs became a thing, but they work well enough. Little flop on this one. I guess that's gonna come down to production. So I just hope you don't get a floppy one. Going forward, you can get some range, but again, it's mostly just gonna be walking. And otherwise you're gonna to have to be really flexing that plastic and I wouldn't wanna do that. You do get some thigh swivel in there, that's good. Is there any other swivel? Just down here at the knee. And the knee is gonna give you less than 90 degrees. These guys are basically gonna just be in walking poses. They're not gonna be in much of a, a, a dynamic pose at all, especially from the waist down. For the feet, we just have ball pegs. So it'll be enough to get the figure standing and balanced and that's about it. Nothing crazy going on for posing. Let's see if there's anything different. Uh, no, wrists all seem to be about the same. Boots are obviously the same. Yeah, torso is the same. You can see the split on this one a lot more easily. So yeah, they're all about the same and they do have the hoses to connect to the helmets. So yeah, articulation's not bad considering the sculpt and paint work put into these. Um, yeah, they're bulky and chunky, but they work well enough. I'll give it a seven, that's fine. So a final verdict for all three of these guys. Uh, yeah, Ripley has less paint because she doesn't need it, but that's okay, it's still fairly well painted. Uh, they all look really good. They all have good accessories. They all pose well enough. Uh, 9 out of 10 for all, each of these. They're all solid figures. If you're into this stuff, pick them up. You're going to enjoy them. They look really good. They have cool accessories. They pose well enough. I can't see people being too disappointed in any of that. So there it is, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, you might want to. I have new videos almost every single day and thousands already on the channel. So make sure you come back for all of that. And in the meantime... Keep collecting.